Hey, welcome into Carpool with Ben, folks. Virtual edition continues, and uh, I met this guy a number of years ago, uh, immediately disgusted him with some thoughts that I had, and he, after getting the restraining order rescinded, uh, decided that we could be friends. Dante Bellini, formerly of RDW Group, now of Hooligan Productions, because, you know, what's, what's a man without one amazing career, but a man who starts a, a company after that first amazing career, and Dante, good to see oh, you, sir. Good to see you too, Ben. A point of clarification. Yes. The restraining order has not been rescinded. Oh. That's why we're doing it this way. Oh, okay. Well, it's so long as I don't have to end the episode because I'm, I'm contractually obligated to, like, you know, <laughs> deliver a certain length here. No, but uh, you are, uh, many people will know you. Obviously, you're, you're rocking the, the Benny shirt there. You have been involved with a, a number of campaigns, uh, advertising campaigns, not only locally, but literally around the world there's been clients you've worked with uh and you're doing something now with a an amazing an amazing artist that many people don't realize uh a lot of the history that they've learned a lot of the documentaries a lot of the the reason why they know so much about the past is because of this great man we'll talk about him in a moment but uh i think we'd be remiss and i think you'll agree with me if we don't give a shout out to uh the better halves our better halves uh, your wife, Patty, my wife, Susan, both uh, who work in uh, educational fields, my wife in early in, uh, early intervention, your wife, who does, uh, she, she speech is- patho more, Speech pathology. Exactly. And so if, as if it's not hard enough having to do it through masks and everything that everybody's wearing now, right. many people had to adapt and do it via Zoom or Skype or telehealth. Your wife has been working with so many kids. Uh, it's, it's incredible. I mean, yeah. Well, when you, um, I posted something yesterday that I think you saw and, um, you know, uh, her, her, the parents and the kids are so appreciative, but in turn, Patty feels blessed to work with these uh, children, um, many of whom have special needs and to see their improvement. And um, when you do that kind of work, day in and day out. Patty's been doing it for over 35 years. And then you compare it to the crap that you and I do. Well, mostly <laughs> me, not you. You do some good stuff. Um, it, it, kind. <laughs> it is, um, it's humbling and it certainly puts things in perspective because um, without people like Susan and Patty and so many others, this world doesn't keep working. No, you're absolutely right, and I was talking about it. You're also a podcaster. You're uh, part of the, the well. filling guys with uh, <laughs> Mr. Bill Bartholomew of Bartholomew Town fame. Yeah. Uh, I was talking with Mary Larson on our podcast yesterday. You know, parents, when all of this happened, distance learning kind of came into play. Parents kind of took this on, and they weren't really prepared to, but the teachers did as well because this wasn't a form of homeschooling. They were taking corporate learning and just – making trying to make it work homeschooling is a lot different it's structured differently so hats off to all the educators who had to go above and beyond uh people who work with the kids patty included my wife who's a couple rooms over I'm, I'm in my little soundproof cave here so she doesn't hear me editing and dealing with stuff but uh nonetheless we are and the uh, lock is on the other side of the door right yes oh yeah oh absolutely <laughs> and uh so uh, <laughs> it happens you know i got a, i got an emergency escape i'm fine the, uh, just in case it all goes downhill but no we are uh, both very blessed men uh to say the least uh you get to do some pretty awesome things one of which working with uh this this incredible uh you know documentarian i mean he does he have a doctorate by by trade he should he should have multiple doctorates from uh, honoraries. By, uh yeah honoraries uh, i believe he has like 20 or 30 of good. them good he should um, we are yeah. talking about ken burns who you right. just produced uh it's the first project that's coming out of hooligan productions here and there talk to me about this um, well, first of all, uh, thanks, Ben, for, for having me on. And second of all, uh, you said something about how lots of people get their history from Ken Burns. In fact, statistically, more Americans get their history from Ken Burns than any other source. Wow. Um, it's uh, pretty, pretty interesting um, when, you think about, when you think about that, because what have we done? We're getting rid of social studies and civics and history in schools. And it's the kind of things we need. Um, it's the, you know, it's the equivalent of, in many ways and, uh, of art and music and, 
and the creative arts, which people also say, you know, we can do without. We can't do without either of those sort of categories of, 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 of studies. <clears throat> and um, the, the fact that people are getting their history from television, from Ken Burns, is, is a great thing uh, in, in many respects. So everything from the war, World War II to the Civil War, which um, arguably is the opus of all documentaries, um, to country music, to the Gene, to the Gettysburg Address, to Vietnam, uh, to so many things. Uh, Ken has been the, the uh, storyteller for our times, the storyteller of our history for our times. Uh, so I'm blessed. I've known Ken for 13 or 14 years now. And uh, I would ask him uh, annually, um, can I do this? Can I do this? And his answer was always a very generous no. <laughs> um, it was uh, no, let's talk about something else. Yeah. Uh, or he pretend not to hear me, um, which a lot of people do. But <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Yeah. It's, hey, you right. remember when I said, no, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, in 2018, uh, we're, at, we're at lunch, and uh, I asked again, and uh, he said, yeah. So it was uh, um, but the way you, to me. <laughs> the way you did it was actually, if I remember correctly, the, uh, the waitress had come over and said, would you like more wine? And you kind of snuck it in. He was actually saying yes to the more wine, and you just, hey, you got to do what you got to do, Dante. I mean, good for you for getting the get. Sort of like when I asked my wife to marry me. It was completely, <laughs> it was an accident, it was something else. Hey, uh, she said yes. So. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, back and forth on, on what this was going to be. Um, it, for me, it was always going to be uh, a, a dive into the personal side of Ken, the uh, a very intimate and warm look at who he is as, uh, as, um, as a part of where he is. So he lives, um, his home is in Walpole, New Hampshire. And he is, um, he is intimately tied to that community for a whole host of reasons. His first documentary, The Brooklyn Bridge, would never have been made had he not moved to Walpole because he could no longer afford to live in New York City wow. in 1979. So it was one of those things, Ben. Either I finished the film or... I live in New York City. I can't do both. Yep. And uh, so he made the decision. He had uh, friends that were already there. And he was able to concentrate and finish this film, which was ultimately uh, nominated for an Academy Award in uh, 1979. And that was the beginning of the Ken Burns that we know. Sure. A lot of people, especially if you, if you toy or tinker with uh, namely the the Apple or or the Mac film products. Sometimes you see this little effect called Ken Burns, and, and it's not just Mac; it's it's a bunch of things. That that that's Ken Burns. That that's who the effect is named after, and it just has he has this incredible way of conveying the story and and putting it all together. Steve How Jobs. Steve Jobs. Uh, you know, offered him a lot of money for it. Really. Um, and. Uh, you know, not in so many words, but there was yeah. a, there was a lot of discussion about it and uh, Ken didn't take any money for it. Wow. It was, you know, he just, uh, that's the kind of guy he was. Well, he's passionate he about, he, he's passionate about what he does and it comes through in when you see it on screen and, and if you, you know, through the audio, all the elements of it really tie together so incredibly. What was it like working on this project I mean, really, your first one out of the gate for your new production company. What was it like wor working on this and, and capturing his thoughts and, and trying to process getting inside the mind uh, of, of Ken? Well, um, you know, I, I kind of know the process. So I have worked on a lot of things. I'd never worked on a feature film. That was my bucket list, a featured you know, documentary. Sure. Um, and, and, and like you, you, you always have an idea of where you want to end up with something. I always knew what the end of this film was going to be. Um, and so when I was, we were doing the interviews uh, and uh, we hit that point where he answered a question that I knew was going to be my end cap. Um, everything else sort of fell into place. Um, so we have over six hours of, of private interviews with Ken, um, interviews with 
uh, townspeople. Uh, Dayton Duncan is a longtime collaborator. Uh, and uh, a set piece for us is the reason I got the idea in the, in the first place was uh, a writer for the Atlantic Magazine. His name is Brian Alexander. And he wrote uh, uh, this beautiful, very long article, feature article for, for the Atlantic on small towns and what small towns mean to the fabric of what America is. And I found that the, that the um, symbiosis between Ken's films that all feature, that all have characters that start in a small town and the fact that he's in a small town uh, sort of integrated and wove and, and wove beautifully into this narrative that Brian had written about in the, in the Atlantic. So all these things sort of fell into place. The confluence was, was beautiful. And I knew what my arc, the arc of my story was going to be. So it literally starts at the beginning and it takes us right up to today. But it's all rooted in what, what does it mean? What does the, the, the small town value mean in Ken? And did Ken change the small town or did the small town change Ken? You can figure that answer out when you watch it. It does world premiere yeah. on Monday on Rhode Island PBS. And uh, after that, obviously, there'll be various listings of where you can see it and consume it. And we'll link those. It is the uh, world the, premiere. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Dante, you are a, a, an incredibly intelligent man, much like myself. That is <laughs> you. Um, when you don't know how to do something, you bring in an expert who does. Uh, similarly, you brought in some incredible award-winning uh, cinematographers, uh, uh, the soundtrack. Talk to me about the crew yeah. you assembled for we're this. A, we're, uh, I mean, we're, you know, uh, Ben, you've worked with us. Um, we're a ragtag band of hooligans, right? Yeah. And um, so some of us are talented and others just figure out who is talented and bring them in, me. Um, <laughs> so my director of cinematography and editor is Eric Latek. And yeah. He is just a genius on steroids. Um, uh, he, uh, he has an incredible eye and, uh, um, and uh, extraordinary ability uh, to edit. He hears music and he's able to, to edit to beats that haven't even been composed yet. Wow. Uh, similarly, uh, we worked with uh, Mauro Colangelo on the music on this, who's a longtime collaborator of Eric. And the unspoken chemistry between the two of them is amazing. So like I was talking about Eric, being able to uh, you know, leave open spaces, uh, cut in a certain way, because he knows that Mauro will fill those voids beautifully. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's just a thing of beauty. I can only, as you well know, I, I'm pretty good at getting an idea, having an idea. I am not very good at being able to push the buttons and do the idea. Yeah. I rely on other people um, to do that. And um, so I'm blessed in that way that I have, uh, you know, team members like that. Uh, and David Zapatka, who you know pretty well. Yeah, you got uh, his book right over your corner, over your, uh, your, your shoulder there. There it is. <clears throat> um, he uh, he works second camera and he is a lighting master. Mm -hmm. um, you know when you see the interviews in this, they're all they're all David and they are just they are just a thing of beauty. Um, and that's our that's our core team. You know, and so it you know when at the end of a at the end of pretty much any movie, you see this three minutes of everyone who's on there. Ours goes by in about twelve seconds. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's a very different level. You've been working on this for a while, so I, I, I have to ask you, you know, yeah. everything with this whole pandemic started really spiraling out of control a couple of months back in March. What went through your mind as kind of the, the you, you were kind of the hub for all these different people, all these different elements working. Where were you at, in the process at that point? And, and did, did you have any, like, I mean, aside from, Anybody who creates always has that little pit in their stomach. Okay, what if this doesn't? What if this flops? What if this doesn't do what yeah, I wanted it to yeah. do? Then you had the 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 just the the whole 
wild card of this pandemic. Right. Uh, what was that process like for you? What was it like going through that 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 period of time? And and you know, really, is this thing even going to be? Can, can we even make this happen yeah. on the timeline we wanted it to? Yeah. Um, well, fortunately, the film was pretty much in the can uh, when when this hit. Um, I had started this film in uh, uh, late October of 2018, okay. and I was still working. So it, you know, there were starts and stops because other things were more critical. I had a day job. Um, this is a passion project more than anything. I was fortunate to have uh, a great partnership with uh, Rhode Island PBS that helped in part to make this happen uh, for me. Um, but either way, it would have happened. Um, so the pandemic hit and we were going to have a May screen, a, a May premiere with people and red carpets and humans, you know, that, that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, so that, that is the only bad side of this. And I've also done private screenings for, let's call them reviewers and critics. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've been active on the post production and post marketing part of the film. I'm gratified to say that everyone that has seen it uh, has really enjoyed it. But most importantly, Ken liked it. Ken loved it. Yeah. Um, and if nobody else liked it and Ken liked it, that would have been enough for me because Mission that, accomplished. Right. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm really happy about where we are in terms of the creative product for that film. But to answer your question specifically, I have uh, six or seven other projects in the pipeline that have been affected. Uh, so shooting hasn't been able to happen in some cases. Um, just in-person meetings that are necessary. I mean, you can do only so much with Zoom, but there are, there's other things that you really need to ha have physical contact. Um, so those things are all moving around. They're not as fluid as I would like. Uh, one is pretty much moving ahead pretty quickly, but the others are, eh, you know, yeah. and I still got my hands in other things, uh, that are Rhode Island based and, yep. um, and that I love to do. I'll never not, I'll never stop doing that. I want, I want to be helpful and relevant and, and, uh, part of the discussion of moving things forward in a better way here. Well, I mean, there's always those great lunch meetings up on the on the hill there. I mean, you just, uh, you know, it's I've never seen a man consume a split pea soup as fast as you do uh, when when it's offered. You just uh, that that was incredible. Uh, at uh, what's the restaurant? The um, uh, Angelos. Angelos. I'm sorry, I just slipped my mind for a second there. Uh, I'm hungry. It's it, we're closing in on lunchtime. Um, this is, I mean, this has just been such a, a really you know unique time, obviously in world history and and. I'm just curious, and, and I don't want you to, to to put words in his mouth or speak for him, but what has, I mean, you've obviously been in contact with Ken during the past couple of months. I'm just curious, what, what has his take been, or, or what, has your, what is your perception of how he's reacted uh, to something that, I mean, this is literally history that we're living through right now. Yeah, um, well, actually, last week, I uh, did a nearly 20-minute interview with him as part of this screening for tomorrow night. And uh, it, one of my questions uh, in the back and forth with him, and I, you know, I, I talk to him socially uh, all the time, and this has affected him. Um, it's, it's, it's given him uh, pause and uh, an opportunity to reflect on a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it's affected him that it's uh, deeply meaningful in terms of what it means historically, the context of which is yet to be determined and may not be determined for, for a long time. But one of the questions I asked him was what piece of advice um, would you give to high school grads and college grads right now? Because more than anything, they have been affected by this in such a way that they're feeling probably more unsettled than many of us. Lots of people are affected, but um, you know, this is the first time in modern history that a whole class of of kids, you know, yeah. got a lot of stuff taken away from them. And, you know, as usual, everything that comes out of Ken's mouth is profound. It, it doesn't matter. You could ask him anything. 
and it would be it would be elegant um, as opposed to you and I. Um, um, there's, and, there's a reason why he's Ken Burns and you're Dante and I'm Dan. Okay, right. <laughs> just, right. just it is what it is. And and he said that you know as many people have said, but he said it way more eloquently than this is that you know this is your opportunity. This is your uh, appreciate what this is and and try to try to understand what it may mean what it may mean for you individually and you collectively how can you make this how can you take this opportunity and make a better you and a better world out of it mm -hmm. um and he's absolutely right and that advice isn't necessarily something that's only germane or 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 specific to them Right. It's to all of us, you know, we can all just take the extra $600 and, you know, and uh, pretend like work never occurred and uh, take our stimulus and, you know, uh, go buy a large screen TV or, or we can take this moment and figure out what really is important and yeah. how we can make a meaningful impact on changing conversations, changing perceptions, making things better, being more involved. And I get it. Lots of people have been affected in a bad way. But at the same time, a lot of people have been made whole. Yeah. You know, so sure. there's only so much crying in the towel that one can do. Yep. Um, and, you know, and that is being mindful of the real pain and the real hurt that is that has occurred here. So um it, it offers, the pandemic has offered an opportunity in many respects for people to reset. And if they haven't, then they should, yeah. is my opinion. No, no, I, I, I agree with you there. And, you know, I, I think those uh, sentiments, you know, I, I can certainly apply them and, and, you know, claim those as my own because, you know, I feel the same way. If you're just going to, if you're just going to go through this and, and just ah, it, th th there's something to be learned here. There's always yeah. a situation to be to be learned from these different circumstances. So I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, this is off topic, but yeah. I'm a uh, I'm astounded, Ben, that I am seeing so many help wanted ads by restaurants. Yeah. Right. So all of these restaurants and um, dozens of them are are th there's there's ads all over Facebook and 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 uh, other places. At, uh, looking for waiters, bartenders, uh, busboys, uh, whatever, uh, offering top pay. Yeah. Where are all the people that work there? Yeah. What uh, they're not coming back, um, and you know, or is it that we've made it? The federal government has made it so that it's not convenient. Yeah. To come back. And and in, and it could be that it could also be the the fact that uh, you know childcare not being as available as it has been, uh, you know if the the warnings with the whole uh, the whole virus having an effect on the older population, whereas the older population would be uh, you know watching or taking part in those childcare, whether it be you know on, on a on a corporate level or a personal level, it's been tough. It, it really has, but. You know, I've I've been impressed by the resiliency of a lot of these small businesses. You know, to kind of dig down and push through it. Uh, the the people out there who have have tried to do the right thing, whether they're you know names that you'd recognize in a community or people that you know they've always been part of the community, and that's that's kind of where they've you know they've been under that guise of oh, I'm just, this is my community. Uh, it, it's 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 the collective, the greater good there. Some so of these restaurant tours are uh, just, um, the, as you say, their resilience is amazing. Yeah. No, and uh, I mean, listen, I, a lot of people are talking about, you know, losing weight during the pandemic. I don't know what they're talking about, but, uh, you know, I've, <laughs> I've certainly done my uh, our fair share here at uh, making sure we help support those local. Uh, those Absolutely. Local and, and uh, you know, it's lots of great stuff to do there, uh, you know, in doing that. Uh, and, you know, so perhaps this is the call on Monday, call up your favorite local restaurant, get takeout, then sit on the couch from Cardi's Furniture and Mattresses, of course, you know, our good friends on the Cardi brothers there. Um, and, and, and take this in, it's going to be on Rhode Island PBS, 
all the 7 links, p.m. All the links and info are there. And then after that, there'll be other ways that you can view it. And, you know, I strongly encourage people go online, follow Ken Burns, follow Hooligan Productions to learn all about the great productions and the great projects you've got in the pipeline because everything's starting to ramp back up. Sir, it was good to see you. Hi, I'm Ben. Thank I'm glad, you. I'm glad that I could remove you from out of your wife's hair i mean at least she maybe she's relaxing hopefully she's enjoying a nice no nap. she's uh, she's actually working right Still, now okay all right well I, yeah. I tried to get you to take care of you so you didn't have to bother her for you know 30 minutes or so well no like you the lock is on the other side of the door here dante good to see you you're you're stellar look forward to this folks tune in it's gonna be amazing thank you ben you're the best <laughs>